Hello everybody, my name is Jay. I'm one of the expert OET teachers here at e2language.com. If you're preparing for OET 2.0, do check out the website. We've got a great preparation course that can help you out. What I wanna do in today's live class is look at listening part A, the new listening part A test. It has changed quite significantly from the previous test. Uh, what I wanna do more specifically is I wanna show you what this test looks like. I wanna to talk to you about a method that you can use. There's lots of things that you need to know about this test to help you uh, perform better on test day. We're gonna do some actual practice using a real sample from the OET and thank you for the OET for allowing me to use it. Then we're gonna go through the answers together, okay? So this will be great preparation for you to prepare you for listening part A. So first of all, let me describe this test to you, this subtest. So this is what it looks like on test day. You can see uh, case notes there with gaps. And what you have to do is complete the gaps with a single word or words, a short phrase from the audio, okay? It's pretty straightforward. But there's a lot to this test. So let me talk to you about a method that you can apply on test day. And first of all, let me start with an important rule. That is, the patient will say the answers that you need, okay? So for example, in the test that we're about to do, you will hear a gastroenterologist talking to a patient called Andrew Taylor. So the answers will come from Andrew Taylor, not the gastroenterologist. But you do need to listen for the medical professional because they will be guiding you through the different case notes and saying, okay, now we've talked about this, let's talk about your diet. And so you'll know that you're on diet, for example. So they're both important, but the answers come from the patient. The second thing I wanna to talk to you about is how you can, I wouldn't say predict the answers, but you can anticipate what the answers might be. And this is extremely helpful. Okay, let's look at this carefully. So what happens is you get 30 seconds reading time. The audio will say, you will hear a gastroenterologist talking to a man named Andrew Taylor. You now have 30 seconds to look at the uh, reading paper or the listening paper, I should say. Now what you can do in those 30 seconds is anticipate what type of word will fit here. Let's look at number one, has had something over a long period. What might that be? What type of word? Number two here, reports a frequent something sensation. We're probably going to be looking for some sort of gerund adjective there with an ing, right? Anyway, I'm gonna give you 10 seconds. You've gotta move quite quickly, because remember you have 30 seconds to look at 12. I want you to predict what type of word might fit in the gap. Okay, let's look at the next set. We've got six, seven, eight. Try to predict what type of word might fit here. Works as an... I should say, now, you're obviously not going to be able to predict the exact answer but what you will be able to do is put in your mind what type of word you need to be listening for, right? And that will help you enormously when the audio starts and you start to work through it. Let's do the rest of them, 9, 10, 11, and 12. Okay, now hopefully you also paid attention to these subtitles here. For example, now trying, it's going to be a type of medication, right? Anyway, 30 seconds goes very quickly when you're trying to find or predict what word, what type of word might fit those gaps. So you do just have to really uh, very efficiently and rapidly read through and just go, okay, 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 got it. All right, let me show you what my predictions were. So number one, has had over a long period. It's going to be a medical issue, I suspect, like a hernia or a cough or asthma, something like that. It's gonna be a singular noun like this. 
Number two, reports a frequent something sensation. It has to be one of those adjectives or nouns, the gerunds, that have an ing ending, like a burning, itching sensation, something like that, right? Number three, most recently, something has become a problem. This will be another medical issue. Number four, word used to describe symptoms. So it's going to be a single word used to describe symptoms. It's going to be an adjective like terrible, awful, painful, something like that, right? Number five, frequent something. Patient didn't initially link these, plural. So this word here is going to have to be a plural noun, like maybe headaches, but it's going to be something with an S on the end because this tells me that this is going to be plural, right? I mean, these are sorts of things that through practice you'll get very good at. Uh, and obviously the better your English is, the more that you will sort of pick up on these naturally. If your English is not so good, this won't come so quickly to you, right? But these are extremely helpful hints in that 30 seconds reading time. All right, number six. This was pretty uh, straightforward, but there's a little clue here. Works as an. It's going to be a job starting with a vowel. Maybe an airline host or maybe an optometrist. Something like that, right? You're predicting a job type starting with a vowel. Seven, situation at work means patient is. Um, actually, it might not be a verb being, it'd just be an adjective there. It could be, um, I, I don't know, nauseous, um, um, sleepy, something like that. Forget verb being, it could be something like that. Number eight, complains of lack of maybe sleep. And here's the word insomnia. So possibly that is the right answer there. But just be careful when you're doing that because it might not be as well. Let's look at uh, 9, 10, 11, and 12. Claims to be consuming sufficient. Well, consuming basically means eating. So it's going to be some sort of mineral or vitamin or food type. Number 10, has experimented with excluding, remember we're under the subtitle of diet, so it's going to be a specific food from diet, and that tells you there anyway. Number 11, has undergone MRI, perhaps? Um, remember this is diet though, so possibly not MRI, but something like that. You undergo an MRI, for example. Medication, number 12, now trying well, this is going to be a type of medication. You can see how powerful predicting or anticipating the answers is in that 30 seconds preparation time, okay? Again, it takes practice so you get better and better at it, and the faster, the more you practice, the faster you get. Okay, also importantly, what I wanna to talk to you about is synonymous language. You've all heard of synonyms, right? Well, let's talk about synonymous language. So not necessarily a single word, but how we say things in different ways. So this is the patient speaking. And this is the note here. Has had something over a long period. So we're going to use synonymous language here. This is not going to mirror exactly. Patient says, well, um, this has been going on for many years. Okay, here's your synonym here. Has been going on for many years, especially this part here, for many years over a long period, right? Now, after meals, I've always tended to get, that is where the answer goes. That's the word that you need to put there. I'm gonna hide it from you for the moment. But you can see how has had something over a long period. You can see the synonymous language here. They don't use the same words in the notes here. Let's look at another one. Okay, effects of condition on everyday life. Situation at work means patient is something. Adjective. He says, there's a chance I might lose my job in a reorganization of my department. Situation at work, reorganization of my department. So that's obviously something that's making me, and there you go, that's where the answer is going to be, okay? I don't know what's going to happen. And that sort of little bit of a clue tells you about this. Okay, let's look at one more. 
Okay, here the signpost is diet, claims to be consuming sufficient, we know this is a type of food, claims to be hydrated. I was told by a nutritionist I saw that people with irritable bowel syndrome often don't eat enough, okay? In my case, I don't feel that's an issue. Okay, claims, sufficient. I don't feel that's an issue. That's his claim there. So you can see the synonymous language there. I followed the nutritionist's advice about taking more fluids during the day. You were talking about hydration. We've moved from number nine to the next one here, especially water, and accept that. In the past, maybe I didn't do that enough. Okay, so that shows you the relationship between what the speakers are saying and what the words are on the page, and they're different, they're synonymous, okay? It's very important to keep that in mind because really that's what's being tested here. Okay, next, we need to use the guide posts. So you're going to have uh, titles and keywords that will guide you if you get lost, okay? Remember that it's broken up. It's not just all background. It was also medication. It was um, a part about his everyday life, for example. So the audio will tell you that you're in background here, okay? And what's going to happen, you're gonna have one, two, three, four, and then there's going to be one that does not have a gap. And this will allow you to catch up and then I'll talk for a while about his pre-existing skin condition, how it was aggravated, before it moves on to number five here. So this is the tough thing about these listening tests is you're listening, you're reading, and then you're quickly writing down the answer, okay? But you're following it all at once at the same time, it's pretty tough. Okay. So for example, here's a good signpost. Okay, we can see this word diet here. Gastroenterologist says, hmm, right, and I understand that you've investigated the possibility that your diet's responsible for your condition. Can you tell me about this? Let's listen to some audio here. And I understand that you've investigated the possibility that your diet's responsible for your condition. Can you tell me about this? I was told by a nutritionist I... Okay, nice. There you go. So particularly the keyword diet, you know exactly where you are on the page. All right, now we've done that. It's time for you to practice. And as I said, this is an official sample test from the OET. I have permission to use it, so thank you, OET. I'm gonna put you under the pressure. Let's do it properly. What I want you to do is get out a piece of paper and I want you to write one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 on the piece of paper. This is gonna be slightly more difficult because on test day, you'll be writing into the gaps on the, uh, on the page there um, and so you've got the context, you've got the keywords you're following. So what you're gonna to have to do with me is you're gonna to have to follow on the computer screen as we move through, and you're just gonna write down the word or words next to the number there, and we're gonna check the answers next. So do stick around and do this because the only way to pass this test is to practice this test. Here we go. Let's start with the introduction. Extract one, questions one to 12. You hear a gastroenterologist talking to a patient called Andrew Taylor. For questions 1 to 12, complete the notes with a word or short phrase. You now have 30 seconds to look at the notes. Good morning, Mr Taylor. Now, you've been referred to me because it's possible that you're suffering from irritable bowel syndrome or a related condition? Uh, yes, that's right. Okay, could you start by giving me some background? Uh, well, um, this has been going on for many years. After meals, I've always tended to get heartburn, but I found that pretty easy to deal with by taking antacids from the pharmacy. But a year ago, things suddenly got worse, and there were other problems I started to notice. The symptoms vary a lot, and they can be quite hard to describe exactly, but the main problem is bloating. I see. I need to tell you about some other things related to my stomach. Mm -hmm. Although this isn't something that happens every day, I've been suffering from constipation in the last month. In the past, I've had the opposite problem and would rush to the toilet several times a day. Mm -hmm. 
I just never know how I'm going to feel from one day to the next. It's the way the symptoms are so unpredictable that I hate. Mm. It's hard to plan my life. Were there any other symptoms unrelated to your stomach and bowel? Well, I have a skin condition that can flare up, and I know this could be related to irritable bowel syndrome. Mm -hmm. And the odd thing is that I often have migraines more or less at the same time as the stomach discomfort, and these can go on for days. It's strange, and I didn't at first think it was anything to do with my stomach problems. Have you noticed anything that can intensify the symptoms in any way? Well, uh, I have a very demanding job as an accountant. I don't know whether this has a bearing on anything, but there's a chance I might lose my job in a reorganization of my department, mm. so that's obviously something that's making me anxious. I don't know what's going to happen. What's the worst effect the condition has on you? The problem isn't just that it's nearly always on my mind, unless there's some pretty big distraction, but also that it's so draining. What I mean is I often feel that I've got no energy at all. I just want to sit around and do nothing when I get home from work, to be honest. I go to bed tired, but I'm frustrated because I have insomnia much more than I ever did before. I wouldn't say I've been suffering from depression, but a condition like this can make you feel rather down. Mm, right. And I understand that you've investigated the possibility that your diet's responsible for your condition. Can you tell me about this? I was told by a nutritionist I saw that people with irritable bowel syndrome often don't eat enough fibre. In my case, I don't feel that's an issue. I've followed the nutritionist's advice about taking more fluids during the day, especially water, and accept that in the past maybe I didn't do that enough. It's hard to say whether that's made a difference, but possibly it's caused a slight improvement. Uh -huh. I'd read that dairy products can make things worse, so I tried cutting them out, but I wasn't convinced it made any difference. I've cut back on caffeine, though not much, actually. I also paid for extensive food allergy tests, but they didn't show anything major, so that's not an area my doctor thought was worth investigating further. What medications have you tried? Well, I took something called an antispasmodic, yep. which my GP says helps to relax the muscular contractions which move food through the gut. But, to be honest, I don't think it made much difference in my case. Have you taken anything else? Well, I've been given antidepressants, and I'm giving them a go. I wasn't sure I completely understood the reasons. Okay, well, a drug like that targets the signals being sent to and from the nerves in the digestive system. It has a calming effect on the muscles there. Mm -hmm. Do you find that this drug was effective? Yes, I'd say it was on the whole. Um... Done. That's it. Remember, you're going to get two of these, though. So there's one extract, and then there'll be a completely different one with a different medical professional and a different patient. How did you go? Uh, if you are enjoying practicing or if you think this is really helpful, remember to click the subscribe button down here on YouTube so whenever we release a new video, you'll be alerted so you can do it straight away, okay? And if you're enjoying this video, please put a thumbs up and a like and a comment into the comment section below. It'd be much appreciated. Okie dokie. Let's have a look at the answers. So, get ready. Number one. Background, has had heartburn, in brackets, you could, have, you could have written heartburn after meals, three words, or just heartburn, that would also be counted as correct. Either of those possibilities are correct. Number two, reports a frequent bloating sensation. Remember we needed an ing type of adjective, and here it is. We, I thought it was burning uh, or itching, but it was actually bloating. Most recently, another medical issue, constipation. Word used to describe symptoms, unpredictable. Possibly you could have written so unpredictable, but certainly unpredictable was the adjective there. Number five, frequent plural noun. We needed migraines. Remember, because 
these migraines. Migraines, plural, not one. If you wrote migraine, it would be considered incorrect. Number six, he works as an accountant. Maybe you missed that, it was said very quickly. He works as an accountant. Situation at work means patient is anxious. Number eight is energy. It was a lack of energy. I predicted sleep, but there you go. Energy, so do be careful, even if you see keywords like this. Number nine, claims to be consuming sufficient fiber. Either spelling would be considered correct. Number 10, he's experimented with excluding dairy or dairy products would also be considered correct. Number 11, has undergone food allergy tests, plural. Or you could have written, written extensive food allergy tests, four words would also be considered correct. If you just wrote allergy tests, it would be considered wrong because it's not specific enough. And number 12, now trying antidepressants or an antidepressant with a hyphen or without a hyphen would be considered correct. Cool, so how did you go? Do put your score into the comments below. I'll be interested and uh, if you're enjoying this, make sure you share this with your friends who are also taking the OET themselves. Cool. Next, I just wanna to talk to you quickly about how to prepare for the OET because OET is by no means a simple test. Personally, I think that probably this part of the test, OET listening part A compared to part B and compared to part C is easier. I think part B and part C in particular are much more challenging, so you should be prepared. How can you prepare? Well, check out www.e2language.com. You can sign up for free. And if you like what you see, you can upgrade your account. Our OET course is a premium preparation course. We are a premium preparation provider. We are trained by the OET on how to prepare uh, good sample tests, for example. So make sure you do prepare with a premium preparation provider. It will help you enormously. And if you're wanting to prepare online or if you need some additional help, check out e2language.com. We've got everything you need in that online course. Anyway, I hope that was helpful. Thanks very much for watching. Uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, click the subscribe button. I'll see you soon.